Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Power come on now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Showmat. Before we jump in, be sure to drop a like for this video. Subscribe right now if you haven't done so. And then also jump over and over to Rudy's Rant on YouTube and subscribe there, too. Greatly appreciate you. And jump on and become a member of the Come On Now, the podcast family. It's only $2.99 for the base level. We're trying to grow the membership component to our channel. So please do uh, subscribe to our channel and become a member as well. Let's jump on in on this topic at hand. <clears throat> and I will tell you this. This is one that I really never wanted to have to do. But man, oh man, do I have to actually say that? See, this hurts me. This hurts me, folks. I am not a Colorado fan. I don't like anything about Colorado. I don't like Dion. I don't like Shador. I don't like Shiloh. I don't like, only person I like in Colorado is Travis Hunter. Only person. Everyone else, ugh, pooh. The fact that I'm going to sit here and I have to, I have to sit here on a camera and say, damn, I might have been wrong about this team. Pains in my stomach. Now, we're talking about probably two plays is the difference between them being three and four right now and five and two. That's the truth. Facts over feelings as we practice here on Come On on Rudy's Rant from Come On Now the Podcast. Facts over feelings. One play is why they're not four and four from against Baylor. Ten seconds is probably why they're not three and four against North North Dakota State. But I got to give credit where it's due. They beat the brakes off of Arizona on Saturday. 34 to 7. Thorough ass whooping. On the road. Shador Sanders did not have to go throw for 400 yards to make it happen. He threw for 250. They ran the ball decently. Isaiah Gustav had 53 yards. Charlie Offord had 53 yards. Don, Alan Hayden had 35 yards. They ran the ball from their tailbacks 28 times. They threw it 33 times. The other seven were Shador Sanders, which was pretty much as easy as he had to run out of the pocket or whatever, or get sacked or what have you. But and I think he had a I think he had a runner two that were actually scripted runs. But they were balanced on offense again, unlike what they were against Kansas State. They became balanced and they dominated this game. I watched the game. It was on my TV. I, can I say that I was concentrating on it? No, because Colorado jumped up quickly, 14-0, and you pretty much knew what was gonna happen. If you fall behind Colorado 14 nothing, you're in for a difficult situation, to say the least. You're going to be in for a difficult situation. And in this case, Arizona got to within 14-7, but it's 28-7 at halftime. Arizona made so many mistakes. I mean, Colorado only scored six points in the second half. But I think it says a lot about Colorado in terms of defensively. They made some plays. They, I mean, they did a good job, man. It's it's hard to argue. They forced three turnovers, two fumbles, one pick. They didn't they didn't commit a ton of penalties. But I gotta sit here and I gotta wonder: Are they are they really better than I thought, or is the Big Twelve? Just that damn bad. And that's where I'm stuck. I don't know if they're better than I thought or if the Big 12 is just so damn bad. And that's what I'm that's what I struggle with here. Because I don't think Colorado has a chance in the hell of winning the Big 12. I don't think they have a chance in hell of making the playoff. I did say they go four and eight again. Obviously, I'm wrong. They're going to do better than that. Uh, I said four and eight, max six and six. <clears throat> After Nebraska beat the brakes off them, I thought they were looking at maybe worse than four and eight. And then Nebraska lost by 49 to Indiana yesterday. So it just shows you the difference in skill and talent and ability that the Big Ten has in comparison to the Big 12, where Nebraska, a mid-tier Big Ten, Big 12, Big Ten team beat up Colorado, and they got absolutely obliterated 
by Indiana. And Indiana has never been known as a football power, but this year they seem to be very, very good. The Big 12, though, is interesting because Iowa State is undefeated. BYU is undefeated. They're ranked 10th and 11th. Kansas State is 6-1. and one. They did just beat Colorado. Their only loss was a whooping loss to BYU. Texas Tech is 5-2. and two. Cincinnati Bearcats are 5-2. and two. Colorado is 5-2. and two. Arizona State is 5-2. and two. TCU is 4-3. and three. West Virginia is 3-4. and four. After that, the U- Utah is a disaster. Uh, they're done. UCF actually gave Iowa State a hell of a run yesterday in a 38-35 game against Iowa State. So that makes me wonder what a, what how good is Iowa State? Seven and zero is seven and zero, but how good are they really? They did beat Baylor by three touchdowns. They did beat West Virginia by twelve, Houston by twenty. I mean, but these aren't. They did beat Iowa twenty to nineteen, but these aren't like wins that I'm going to sit here and say, "Oh my god." This conference, people say the ACC is bad. The Big 12 is worse. The Big 12 is terrible. The Big 12 as a conference is awful. The the, the talent level, the competition, I think it's a very, I think it's a very even, I don't understand the glitching in this video right now. I think it's a very even conference overall. Remember when Kansas was supposed to be decent in this conference? They suck again. It's weird. Colorado has an actual – they play Cincinnati at home next this week, and they go to Texas Tech, have Utah at home, Kansas on the road, Oklahoma State. I will tell you this. It is it, – I think Colorado could go 10-2. Can I just say that? I don't know that the, the, like they have the weakest teams in their conference the rest of the schedule. They're not going to play BYU. They're not going to play Iowa State. They're not going to play. They'll play Texas Tech on the road. That might be their toughest game left because Utah at home. Utah looks like trash now. Kansas is on the road. They suck. Oklahoma State. What happened to them? They were weren't they three and zero? They were three and zero. Well, they're three and four now. They've gotten beat. They lost to Utah, got whipped by KSU, got whipped by West Virginia, and then lost by three to BYU this past weekend. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm serious. I have no idea at this point. This conference is just awful. So I think the reality is they have a home game against Cincinnati, which is obviously a big one to move them up in the standings. If they lose to Cincinnati, they're not, they have no chance to make the playoff, like the, the Big 12 championship. They have no chance. They cannot lose. They can't lose any games. I think they can't lose another game with this, this schedule to have a chance for the Big 12 championship, being that they're already, um, they already don't have the tiebreaker with Kansas State. But they're better than I thought. They are. I mean, two plays difference. I'd be probably saying they're not saying something different, but they might be better than I thought. They 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 have so much offensive firepower, and teams are so afraid defensively against them because they know that Shador is going to chuck the ball down the field all the time, draw some bogus PIs, um, but. They are also effective throwing the football. And you're almost looking, you would almost, almost prefer them run the ball. And if you don't have a good pass rush, and if you look at the next teams they play, I don't know what their pass rushes are like. I'm curious. Let's take a look at what their pass rush looks like. So Cincinnati looks like it has a decent pass rush. The Cincinnati, see, this is. This is the kryptonite for um, Colorado. You got four and a half, six, eight, 11, 15, 17. You got 17 sacks in how many games? Seven games. That's decent. 
that's that's a decent pass. Is it a great pass rush? No, but it's a decent one. <clears throat> Can Eric Phillips, Jared Bartlett, Dante Corleone, can they get to the quarterback? Can they get to Shador? That's that's the key. Any, anything else, everything else is semantics. Everything else is semantics in this. It comes down to one thing when you're playing Colorado, your pass rush. If you can't pressure Shador Sanders, you cannot win. West Virginia's pass rush stinks. They only got 13 sacks in seven games. That's trash. Uh, who else here? Uh, they got Texas Tech. Texas Tech had 50, 51 points put on them by Abilene Christian. So that tells me that that tells me that Texas Tech's going to have people scoring. Texas Tech just lost to Baylor, 59-35. At home, no less. Texas Tech beat Arizona 28-22. They beat Cincinnati 44-41. They, they, defensively, they're terrible. Defensively, they can't stop anything. So if if this game is a close game, it's going to be something like 48-45. Um, but otherwise, I would expect Colorado to blow these guys out. They can't stop anybody. That's historically what's been going on at Texas Tech. Pass rush here. <laughs> they got none. They got Texas Tech has less than none. They got have six sacks in seven games. Six. They got no pass rush, like zero pass rush. I would I would venture to guess that Colorado puts up 50 on them. And then you go into the Utah game, and they're missing Cam Rising, who's done. So you, what are you going to get out of Utah? I mean, Utah's lost three in a row. They can't score. And that's obviously something that you have to be able to do to beat Colorado. If, if you can't score, you can't beat Colorado, man. It's just the way it is. Utah. Let's see what Utah's numbers are defensively. They have thir- uh, no pass rush, 13 sacks in seven games. I said that's that these are these are bad pass rush teams. They have no pass rush. Kansas. Kansas is a disaster. Kansas has wins over Lindenwood and Houston. My God, they suck. Jesus. This conference is so bad. They have a decent pass rush, but I don't know that matters. They're just trash. And then the final game is against Oklahoma State. Ah, Man, I tell you what. I I tell you this. It will be insufferable. It will be some insufferable shit if this team goes 10-2. Oklahoma State. Folks, I'm going to say it. Colorado's going to go 10 and 2. <laughs> Colorado's going to go 10 and 2. Oh my God. I cannot believe this shit. Colorado's going to 10 and 2. I, I, the benefit that Colorado has is that Kansas State plays Iowa State. Um, BYU. No, they have nothing left in their schedule. It's trash the rest of the way. Yeah, it's going to come down to, I think, this Iowa State game with K-State for the purposes of – who else does Iowa State play? Their schedule is trash also. I mean, it wouldn't shock me if Iowa State was undefeated. They could go 12-0 in this schedule. With this schedule, they could go 12-0. This schedule is trash. Oh, my God, it's bad. Folks, the Big 12 is garbage. Colorado got out of the Pac-12, avoided those those freaking teams that could score 40 and 50 a game and overcome bad defense. These teams in the Big 12, all the ones that could score, they left. They all left. And the ones that are still here can't score. You, got, you need two things to be Colorado. One, run the ball. Can you run the ball? If you can run the ball, you be Colorado. And two, a pass rush. If you have those two things, you be Colorado. Kansas State dominated Colorado, running the ball, pass rush. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing else. The game wasn't close. Baylor, for the most part, dominated that game against Colorado. Pass rush, ran the ball. Like These are the types of things that you do to beat Colorado. It's very, very simple. It's not a complicated component, although Baylor blew it at the end, but they ran the ball. 
They ran the ball, and and I mean, they had pass rush. And they, I mean, they sacked him eight freaking times, eight times. So, but yeah, I don't know. I, I Colorado's gonna go ten and two. I feel sick. You see, folks, I'm not subjective. I'm objective, and it's hard for me to find. A, if they don't go ten and two. It's because someone that doesn't have a pass rush was able to get to him. Um, Utah could potentially give him a headache defensively, but not offensively. I think Texas Tech could be a shootout. I think Oklahoma State could be a game, but they got two road games left. Uh, God, I I can't. Facts over feelings, 10 and 2. That's what they're going. They're going 10 and 2. They're not going to make the playoff, but they're going to go 10-2. And, and they're not going to make their conference championship game, but they're going 10-2, and, and they're going to play in a good bowl game. And we're going to listen to Dion for the rest of our lives. <laughs> I got up the left. What are your thoughts? Leave a comment. Pound that like button. Be sure to subscribe. Rudy's Rant at YouTube. Come on out of the podcast on YouTube. We appreciate you, man. Facts to our feelings.